Lev, congratulations on winning the Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival 2018. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honor. First, give us your thoughts about the tie breaks. Uh, it started off tough for me because I was, I don't know, I, I guess that's, that's something that I have. I adjust really slowly to everything. So time control or uh, uh, determined format. So uh, I started off slow and first game I was in mild trouble, second game also, but uh, I pulled through and I think against Max I was playing well, a little bit too slow, but uh, generally okay. Yes, and overall, after the way the tournament began, a first round draw and then going up to the tie breaks, making it to the playoffs and winning it, you must be pleased with yourself. Yeah, generally uh, it was a decent tournament, except the last game. I mean, position was just so promising. It, you don't get such uh, promising positions against such good players like Hikaru, so... What to do? I'll take the win. Now, give us some insights on uh, the on a little bit of psychology part of it. I mean, what was was it stressful going into playing these playoffs with Maxime, the finals? Uh, how do you cope or deal with this change in time control? Playing three different time controls in one day, actually. Yeah, of course it's tough. But uh, since we've played many of uh, World Cups, that's where you get the training uh, and. You understand that, I mean, you cannot dwell on bad results. You have to move on immediately. So that's more or less uh, the psychology of a tie break. And uh, was there a bit of deja vu from the World Cup, your match against Maxime, which was a very exciting semi-finals, a lot at stake. Was that something that was on your mind? Were you thinking about that at all? I was thinking that Maxime would definitely love to have a revenge. <laughs> So it was my mission not to allow it. And uh, I succeeded, so it was a uh, yeah, great achievement for me. And you've had an incredible 2017 and a brilliant start to 2018 now winning. And obviously that would put you in a great mood for the candidates. Uh, I'm always in a good mood when I qualify to play the, the most important tournament of the year which is for me the candidates anytime I, I get to play there. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited. Let's see how it goes. You're looking forward to the candidates. Is that, is that something that's also a very strong personal goal for you professionally, the, upcom the upcoming World Championships? Yeah, I think for any player who uh, belongs in some way to elite, it's kind of a dream to play one day a uh, world championship match. Uh, for me, it has been a, a disappointing road so far, but uh, that's what chess and I think any sport teaches a person that you have to be resilient and you have to believe and you have to try. I mean, there are, uh, well, you can, you have to try. Right, now uh, this tournament also had its own ups and downs for you. Uh, but overall, how was your experience coming back to an open tournament? Of course, winning it helps a lot, but just the overall atmosphere and how did you feel about it? It, it was uh, in some way relaxing because uh, the players you play, uh, I mean, um, normally their opening preparation is not as good. So you're kind of, uh, you don't have to prepare so much. So it's more about staying fresh. And I'm a pro in, in not preparing, so. And uh, yeah, it, it was definitely fun, definitely something I would love to repeat again. Right, now we saw a lot of creative chess from you as well here, which is uh, pretty much your style. What keeps you inspired off board to play the way you play? Normally, my wife getting angry at me when I play boring chess. She says, okay, you're old now, and things like this, so that's... that's Time to come back home. <laughs> so that's very motivational. <laughs> right, and uh, what are your plans after this amazing victory? How are you, uh, your road to the candidates? Where are you going to, what are you going to be doing? Yeah, I'll prepare a little bit, so... 
I have something like a little bit more than a month. So just uh, I'll relax a lot. Yeah. So that's also very important. And how important is the whole physical fitness part of it? Did you feel that stamina was also extremely important in this event? Yeah, of course. Uh, generally, uh, there are moments you get tired, of course, uh, when, when you get to play chess for 10 days uh, consecutively. But uh, I, I had one short game, so I think that helped just to uh, recover the, the game against Oparin, uh, which was unexpectedly short, but uh, I think it was a positive thing because I went back to my room and I slept for three hours, I think, that day. So it was important to regain my vigor. Uh, Lev, you know, I was reading one of your interviews and it was very interesting. Uh, you said something about how you think that chess is a conversation. Uh, between yourself and your opponent when you're playing a game. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, yeah, you, you know, I think uh, every uh, competition when it's one person against one, you, you get very intimate with uh, your opponent. So you follow the way they breathe and you, you you follow their eyesight, you know, you, you, you want to know what they're thinking. So, and in some way it's always a conversation because you pose questions with your moves and, you know, and they, the good players always have adequate reaction. And, and do you feel you were able to tune into that today as well uh, during the tie breaks? When you're playing against really strong players like Maxim and Richard, generally uh, a lot depends also on the luck on that day. I mean, you got to get the position that you want. So in tie breaks, a lot is decided by that. So you can't really say, uh, I had this uh, wonderful, uh, everything worked out because I did this and that. It's more or less like a basketball game where the difference is maybe two or three points. So had you missed uh, some shot, you would be a loser and they would be asking your opponent those questions. <laughs> right, now moving a little bit off board, um, I've heard that music has the power to make you cry. Is that true? It is. Mostly classical music makes me cry. I'm a sentimental guy, what can I do? Opera, definitely. So, yeah, uh, even literature. I think I'm, a, I'm one of those people who's uh, controlling his emotions, but uh, at times uh, art uh, is hard to bear for me. I get too, too emotional. Do you think that's the reason that we see such creative and intuitive chess from you over the board as well? Oh, I thought you wanted to say that's the reason why you play like a chicken sometimes. <laughs> and I don't know what's the reason, but uh, I generally need an inspiration to play uh, chess and I search for it in every sphere of my life. I mean, ranging from nature, uh, my personal life and also uh, uh, connection with art. And how are you going to celebrate? Uh, well, uh, I don't know yet, but definitely there will be some nice celebration. Well, the closing ceremony is about to begin. We let you go get dressed for it because you're the man of the evening. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much. Thanks.